So welcome to my Christmas video game buyer's guide and I'm going to recommend some video games to buy for your loved ones this time of year. And these are all games that I played, that I've really enjoyed, that I think are very good recommendations. And also I have some other books and Dungeons and Dragons and some anime recommendations at the end as well. So to begin with, we know that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are the big sellers this Christmas. But I'm saying, if you ain't able to get one, if you weren't able to get a pre-order, don't give in to the scalpers. Wait till after Christmas. These things are not going to go anywhere. They will show up eventually. But for anybody who did pick one up, that wants some recommendations, who hasn't picked these up already, I gotta say, on the PS5, Demon Souls is a really good showcase of early PS5 graphics and what they're capable of doing with this machine. I mean, I have marveled at how the gothic setting and the characters look, the giant enemies on the screen, their reflections, everything, the shading, the textures. I've been sitting there a lot of times getting killed going, oh my God, look at this game. It really is something else. So Demon's Souls is a high recommendation. Another one, obviously, is Spider-Man Miles Morales. And this is a shorter game. It's kind of more of a, an add-on to the original Spider-Man game. And this game here, this version, has both of the games included. And you can also bring your save file from your PS4 over to your PS5. And Man, playing this game is a sight to behold. It's a beautiful experience. And another big recommendation on the PS5. Now, for the Xbox, you know what the big game is for me? The big game is Yakuza, uh, Like a Dragon. This game is awesome. For anybody who's been following the series, this one is more of an RPG rather than a standard beat em up style of game. But that's where the game is really cool. I like the RPG mechanics of it. I like building up your crew, your party members, and going out into the city and kicking the crap out of everybody. And also, there's a really beautiful storyline here, and you get to know these characters in an incredible way. And also, the game looks way better on the Xbox Series X. Now, next gen is here, but on current consoles, there's games that rival these consoles and with some great games, some great stories. So don't feel bad, as I say, if you weren't able to get a PS5 and an Xbox Series X because on current consoles, there's some beautiful gems. Final Fantasy VII, the remake, came out at the beginning of the year. This game has been hyped beyond reality. Did it live up to the hype? Absolutely. It's the first part in a bigger series of games that will come over the next probably 10 years. But that first game, entering into Midgar, the graphics, the story, the flushing out of the world a little bit more to get to know what else was out there. Uh, because the original Final Fantasy VII is such a classic game that we all just wanted more. And this game definitely gave us that with super next-gen graphics. I mean, the graphics in this game are stellar. I still can't believe that I played all through the game with those kind of graphics. I mean, as a kid, I would have passed out thinking that in the future I would play a Final Fantasy VII Remake that looked that good with the characters all back with that amazing story and a different twist to the story as well. Another beautiful game on the PS4 is Ghost of Tsushima. I highly recommend this game. It's a samurai action game. But man, it is so much more than that. There's a great underlining story, great action. I mean, it's, it's just like out of a Kurosawa action film from back in the day. And I just fell in love traversing the land. It's really open world. You can go anywhere. You can follow the wind to figure out where to go next. And I just was in awe looking at this. And if anybody ever says that video games are not art, they're out of their minds because this game is art. It is one of the best PS4 games ever made. High recommendation. And another game that I've been really enjoying this year is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, the remaster, the remake of the original game that came out nearly 20 years ago. And I was a skateboarder back then, and I absolutely loved the original game. And this remaster is absolutely awesome. I mean, they've done such a great job with the graphics, and the gameplay is back. And the gameplay was awesome to begin with. 
big recommendation there. And if you're looking for something a little bit different for the game, there's also this collector's edition that comes with a deck as well. So high recommendations for that if you can find it. Now, if you've been watching The Mandalorian and you need a Star Wars fix somewhere in there, there's Star Wars Squadrons, a shooting style of game. And what's really awesome about the game as well is a VR component in it. So there's that aspect, but it's a lot of fun. It's great to jump into a ship and to be you know, blasting the Empire and all of that. And just the storyline is not too bad as well. It's a short campaign. It's nothing too gigantic, but you will get your Star Wars fix and it's a bit of fun. And for all the action RPG fans out there, I recommend Ease Celseta. It's an Ease game, so of course I'd be recommending it. It's a fun little romp, and so I recommend that one for sure. And also, Trials of Mana. I like the game so much that I bought it on the Nintendo Switch and on the PS4. These are really fun action RPGs and, and big recommendations from me. I really enjoy those games a lot. Now into the world of the Nintendo Switch. It's been a very unusual year for sure. Obviously we had Animal Crossing at the beginning of the year. That's a really fun game. And then something else came out that was a little bit unexpected. And that was this one, Mario Kart Live home circuits. This kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, what is this? It's an augmented reality game where you can make a track out of your living room and you use this little RC car right here, which you charge up to your Nintendo Switch and then it has a camera here and you drive it around your living room and it will populate it with other Mario characters and other carts in there and things like that that you will race against and other enemies and stuff that you can bounce off. This is a ridiculously fun, interesting game by Nintendo. I have a funny feeling that this will become a little bit rare in time as well, but this is a lot of fun for Christmas morning. If you're looking to buy something for a younger person, I'd say this is really good for younger people. I think for adults, you know, the young at heart like myself, you'll have a lot of fun with it as well. I think it's one of those things that'd be a lot of fun to open up Christmas morning and play. And wow, driving around my living room, I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And it is a lot of fun. It's also two players for somebody else who has one of these, so bring your friends over. Or maybe don't because of this time of year. Now, one game came out on the Nintendo Switch this year that really blew me away. It originally came out on the Wii back in the day, but we finally got a remaster definitive edition with Xenoblade Chronicles. And this is an excellent RPG huge world to traverse and explore, and a lot of crazy monsters to fight against, beautiful colors, gigantic bosses, high recommendation for this game. And also there is this as well, the collector's edition, the definitive work set right here. And so if you're looking for something for the RPG fan that has everything, try to track this one down. And for the Zelda fans out there that just can't get enough Zelda, there's a couple of Zelda games. There's Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, and Cadence of Hyrule. One of these, the Cadence of Hyrule, is a rhythm style of game. So you kind of control Link to a beat, and that's a lot of fun, very cutesy animation, really beautiful looking. And then Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, this game is incredible. It takes place 100 years before Breath of the Wild, so I'm already happy that we're in that universe where you're fighting hundreds and hundreds of enemies over and over, but there's a fun little storyline in there, lots of great bosses, lots of characters, lots of great enemies to kill over and over and over again, and these are two really fun Zelda style of games. Next up for the Nintendo fan that has everything, do you have this? The Game & Watch. Uh, Game & Watch is a classic handheld device from a long time ago where this is a new uh, revision on that idea where they have Super Mario Brothers on it with a beautiful LCD screen. And it's a novelty item, but it's a really fun one. I had to pick this up, I grabbed it off Amazon, and I'm really happy to have grabbed it. And because I'm a big fan of those old style Game & Watches from back in the day, and I think this is a really great way to celebrate Mario's 35th anniversary. So those are the main consoles there that I'm talking about. What else do we have this Christmas? What else do we have? One of my personal favorite items that I've gotten this year, because I'm a fan, I'm an old school fan of this machine, they released the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. 
This is my childhood in a small box. And honestly, the machine is not that much smaller than the original uh, Turbo Graphics. But what is really cool is all of the games it comes with. And there's a lot of classics on here. You got Blazing Lasers, you got Dungeon Explorer, Military Madness, Easebooks 1 and 2, personal favorites, of course. And a lot of shooting style games. We got Newtopia, uh, JJ and Jeff, Kadash, all the old classics are on this machine. A big high recommendation. You can also buy a turbo tap for this thing and plug in extra controllers. I have mine in the other room waiting for COVID to end so I can play some Dungeon Explorer with my friends once again. But big high recommendation for the Turbo Graphics Mini. Maybe you have some friends or loved ones that love video game music where we got you covered here with data discs. Data discs is the premier place to get video game soundtracks, especially vinyl uh, soundtracks, which I totally love. And this right here is the soundtrack for Ikaruga, one of my favorite shooters of all time, uh, favorite smups of all time, if you want to call it that as well. And the soundtrack is here. So check out Data Discs. They have a lot of different albums out there. And this is number 22 in that section. So check out the other ones as well. Now for some video game book recommendations. This is an easy one. My God, Bitmap Books has you covered right here. Metal Slug, The Ultimate History. This is an absolutely gorgeous book looking at the Neo Geo classic game and checking out all of the artwork, all of the sprite work. And it's amazing to flip through this book and see all the original paintings, all the original posters that they had for it, all the original sketches. And it's, it's so much detail in here, it kind of blows your mind. And I think Bitmap Books did a really great job with this book. I highly recommend that. I also recommend another beautiful book this year by Bitmap Games as well, Super Famicom The Art Collection. This is all of the artwork all of the covers for all of the Super Famicom games that were released. Yes, all of them. And it's just such a trip down memory lane for myself. This is the time period that I grew up in and I'd always be looking through video game magazines, checking out all these games. A lot of them never came out over here. And to see all of the box art, a lot of that I recognize from back in the day in video game magazines, it's nice to see again. And it's very nostalgic to flip back and see some of the old, great old, box arts like Secret of Mana and the Super Metroid artwork and Mario Kart stuff. Really great book, this one as well. And for PC players as well, oh man, I got a lot of nostalgia here for this one. The Art of Point and Click Adventure Games. Another great book. And this covers your Leisure Suit Larrys, your Police Quests, all those fabulous games like Loom and, you know, uh, Indiana Jones back then. The Adventures of Monkey Island. The list goes on and on and on, especially into like things like Myst and things like that. This is a great trip down memory lane, checking out the art of point and click adventure games. And for any Dungeons and Dragons players out there, there is this. The Curse of Strahd revamped in this beautiful coffin right here. And this comes with a lot of different pieces, a lot of different things going on. Based on Ravenloft, the old module of Ravenloft, one that I grew up playing all of the time, and I've already played through The Curse of Strahd with my friends. We love this campaign. I can't recommend this enough to players out there that if you want that gothic setting in your Dungeons and Dragons games with like vampires, this is a really great way to go, especially with all the gypsies and the werewolves and all that setting is one of those classic ones to me in Dungeons and Dragons, a one that I highly recommend. So for the Dungeons and Dragons player that has everything, think about picking this one up. Now, last but not least, I have some anime recommendations of some shows that I've been watching this year that I've really, really enjoyed. Me and my wife watched these things to death and we really had a lot of fun and I thought I'd slip these in and give some recommendations. The first is Orange Road. This is the TV series, this is the movie, this is the OVAs in two box sets right here. And let me say, they've done a great job remastering this. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And this is by Discotech. And uh, this is a big recommendation for me for old school anime fans. It's a, it's a really fun story. It's a bit of a teen drama, romantic comedy style of show with some psychic powers going on in there and some very, very strange, entertaining characters. Uh, really, really enjoyed this 
quite a bit. And this show I can't wait to recommend is City Hunter. This is a show from my youth. I used to watch this on beta with subtitles if I was lucky, if I was able to, to get that. So to watch it in high definition now, I never thought I'd see City Hunter looking as good and as vibrant as it does. And me and my wife had just had her first little girl and we, during the first few months when she was a newborn, we had no time to ourselves, obviously, but we had half an hour every night that we kind of get together like ships in the night and we watch one half an hour episode of City Hunter. And it always put us in such a kind of good mood, uh, you know, because we were you know, dealing with a crying baby all the time and we could never make her happy and all of that. So the parents were able to get half an hour of, of smiles with City Hunter. And let me say, I don't think this show would fly nowadays because the main character is such a, a woman chasing, you know, kind of crazy guy that way that I think they'd be frowned on nowadays. But back in 1987, you know, it doesn't take itself too, too seriously. So it is a bit of a laugh that way. So those are my recommendations for my Christmas Buyers episode. I want to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Definitely a lot of video games in there to begin with. I hope all you families have a really good holiday this Christmas season. And guys, Till next time.